A recent study shows that Boston is the third most inequitable city in the nation, with the top 5% of households earning 15 times what the body 20 earn. On Tuesday, April 14th, allies joined more than 2,000 workers from across different low-wage industries at Forsyth Park near Northeastern University to rally for higher wages. The march was organized by the Wage Action Coalition, which consists of Massachusetts community, religious, and labor groups, united in support of the fight for 15 and in the fight against income inequality. Now, to tell us more, we've invited Executive Vice President of 1199 SEIU United Healthcare Workers East, Veronica Turner, and Cedric Powell, a personal care attendant from Dorchester who is currently making a little over $13 an hour. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Veronica, let me start with you. Just tell us, what is the Wage Action Coalition and how did it get started? The coalition was born out of the national fight for 15 months. Uh, movement. Um, it is. Uh, it started here last year with a series of demonstration, protests, and actions led by workers from every industry imaginable, faith-based leaders, labor leaders, um, and uh, community grassroots organizations. Now, a study de uh, recently declared Boston is the third most inequitable city in the country. What are some of the things that uh, the Wage Action Coalition is doing to bring about reform to change that? So we are going to, and we are now, um, educating the public and raising awareness around these issues. We are bargaining for 15, and we are going to pass legislation um, to end poverty wages. Okay. Now, Cedric Powell, you're a personal care worker. Uh, you earn uh, $13 an hour. Talk to me about, um, I guess, uh, the movement um, and the difference uh, that $2 an hour will make, make to you and the people that you, you work with. Um, I think to start off, I would say as a personal care assistant, we have many jobs, you know, um, we take on a lot. We're not just out here working for ourselves. We're working for, you know, you guys' family and things of that nature. This isn't just for, you know, PCAs. This is for, you know, everybody that's out there fighting to pay their bills, to feed their children and things of that nature. And I feel that, you know, what we have going on now is just the start. You know, um, we need, of course, a lot more people out there, you know, to show that this is serious and it really is hurting. Okay. Now, uh, Veronica, could you talk a little bit more about uh, what happened on uh, April 14th here in Boston, your big, your big demonstration? I think it was a historic day um, where workers stood up. Uh, and said that we have the solution. The solution is to pay a livable wage. Now, these are some pictures from that day. To, again, uh, continue to talk to me about the, what, what happened on that day. So um, it was a massive rally of workers from many different industries, community organizations, faith-based leaders, and labor leaders. Uh, we took over the street. These are our streets, and we wanted to ensure that um, um, the workers wanted to ensure that their voices was heard. Now, at 1199 SEIU, uh, your union represents 52,000 health care workers throughout Massachusetts and nearly 400,000 workers across the, the East Coast. How do you see your workers' role in lifting up the wages for uh, fast food workers or airport workers or, um, you know, just all, all low-wage workers? Yeah, well, believe it or not, we have health care workers who are taking care of the sick, the vulnerable, the disabled, who don't make $15 an hour. But as health care workers, we understand that, that poverty wages has an, infact, an impact on all of us. Okay. And uh, I might ask you, Cedric, uh, again, talking about the, the importance of raising the wages, in your view, uh, uh, you talked a little bit why it's important to you and the workers, but uh, talk to me about how important it is to, uh, to the industry and to the patients you care for. Um, it's very important because of the fact that with the people that we're working for, we have a, a lot of hours. We only get so many hours and, you know, we need this just to survive, just to make it, you know, in today's economy. I mean, it's very hard. You see, there are those that's out there that are five or six jobs just to, you know, maintain their household. Now, do you, uh, Veronica, do you have any, does anybody have any idea how many workers across the state are earning uh, less than $15 an hour? Um, so in terms of home care workers, there is um, about 50,000 home care workers who don't make uh, $15 an hour. And let me just say that the turnover 
uh, for home care workers, uh, they're spending it. Uh, the agency's expending it. And the consumers and the residents are the folks who are suffering. Now, one of the, crit uh, the criticisms you always hear about this, uh, saying that mi raising a minimum wage uh, actually decreases jobs because it makes it harder on small businesses uh, to afford employing uh, people. How do you sp respond to that criticism? So uh, there have been numerous studies, and there is no evidence that suggests that raising the minimum wage would decrease the number of jobs. But I also don't think that we can give big business a pass on this. They can't talk out of both sides of their mouths. Uh, in one respect, they say that they don't want to support families or underemployed employees. And in the next breath, they're saying that they can't afford to pay their workers a living wage. Okay, and leave it right there. But uh, just, just the last word here, how are you feeling about the way the movement is going. I mean, we've seen uh, Walmart raise uh, raise their, their, their wages for their workers. Uh, how do you feel about the way things are going in Massachusetts? I feel inspired. I feel like uh, folks are talking about poverty wages and saying that enough is enough uh, and taking to the streets to ensure their voices are heard. Okay, and we'll leave it right there. Veronica Turner, Cedric Powell, thank you for coming in, and good luck in the fight 15. Thank you for having right. us. When we come back, recruiting Latino students to Catholic schools right here on Urban Update. Stay with us.